Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be covering differential diagnoses for pigmented lesions. So these are essentially blue or black patches in the mouth. They are rarely painful and can appear as solitary or multiple. Another important thing to note is that oral pigmentation might be due to neoplasia, which means that a biopsy should be carried out if there is any uncertainty on the diagnosis or suspicion of malignancy. Let's start by breaking up the different types of oral pigmented lesions by the different possible causes. So number one, pigmentation can arise secondary to deposition of external agents, for example an amalgam tattoo. Number two, pigmentation can arise because of more melanin production. Number three, pigmentation can arise because of more melanin producing cells, i.e. the melanocytes, and these are specialised pigment producing cells present in the basal cell layer of the mucous membranes and skin. So in the first category, an example of this would be an amalgam tattoo, and these are the most frequent cause of intraoral pigmentation that you'll typically see. They can appear as a grey or black macule in the mouth, and they happen because of traumatic implantation of amalgam particles into the soft tissues. This might happen when placing an amalgam restoration, polishing an amalgam or even a tooth extraction. No treatment is required and if there is any doubt in the diagnosis, again it's important to take a biopsy to establish one. Secondly, intentional tattoos can be a cause for a pigmented appearance in the mouth as you can see here. In the second category, we can break this down into external and internal causes. For external causes of increased melanin production, an example would be smoking because the contents of tobacco are believed to stimulate melanin production by melanocytes. You typically get a diffuse presentation, which can vary in intensity depending on how much the patient smokes. You can diagnose this based on the patient's history and tobacco use. And if a biopsy is taken, it would show results no different to physiological pigmentation, i.e. an increase in melanin production. Besides encouraging smoking cessation, no other treatment is required. Another example of an external cause for increased melanin production would be drugs, because some drugs can stimulate melanocytes to make more melanin. Examples of this include anti-malarial drugs and contraceptive pills. The diagnosis is made on the history of the pigmentation and when the drug was started. Again, you might need to take a biopsy to rule out other pigmented lesions like melanoma, which we'll talk about more later on in this video. In terms of management, there isn't a specific treatment for the condition besides stopping the medication. For internal causes, there are a number of things that can cause more melanin to be produced, and we'll touch on these one by one. For example, an oral melanotic macule, which is essentially the equivalent of a skin freckle in the oral cavity. These are idiopathic, which means the cause is unknown you essentially get increased melanin deposition with no increase in the melanocyte numbers and there is no risk of malignant transformation. Secondly, racial pigmentation, which can be perfectly normal in darker skinned individuals. Addison's disease, also known as primary adrenal insufficiency, is a condition where the adrenal glands don't produce enough cortisol and aldosterone. This is commonly caused by an autoimmune response in the UK but it can also have other causes, for example, malignancy or infection, usually tuberculosis, or iatrogenic causes where patients take long-term systemic steroids to treat other conditions. So essentially with Addison's disease, the reason there is hyperpigmentation is due to increased adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH, which happens because of reduced cortisol levels, and this stimulates melanocytes to produce more melanin. So just to reiterate, low cortisol causes increased ACTH, which results in more melanin production by the melanocytes. So clinically, you may see hyperpigmentation of the skin, as well as multiple melanotic macules on the gingiva, lips and buccal mucosa. Patients may also complain of weakness, weight loss, nausea, vomiting and hypertension. The condition is managed by the patient's physician with replacement steroids and no treatment is required for the intraoral pigmentation. Next we have physiological pigmentation of pregnancy, 
also known as melasma, and this too can give oral pigmentation. Hoyt's Jager syndrome. This is a genetically inherited syndrome and is characterised by a large number of perioral freckles, intraoral pigmentation, and intestinal polyps. Diagnosis is important because of the genetic risk of bowel cancer. Lastly, post inflammatory melanin incontinence. This is where long standing inflammatory mucosal disorders, such as oral lichen planus, pemphigus, or pemphigoid, cause mucosal pigmentation. Moving on to our third category for causes for pigmentation, and this is increased number of melanocytes. We'll discuss two examples, melanocytic nevus and melanoma. Melanocytic nevi are a benign proliferation of melanocytes. They look like small brown or blue moulds, as you can see here. Because it's often impossible to differentiate them from other pigmented lesions like melanoma, for example, all nevi should be biopsied to establish the diagnosis. Since they're typically small, they are usually excised. And finally, melanomas, which are a proliferation of malignant melanocytes and make up less than 1% of all oral malignancies, so they are considered to be rare. Some features that suggest a melanoma that we need to keep a lookout for include variation in colour of the lesion from black to red, irregular and poorly defined borders, ulceration and a size larger than one centimetre. The most common sites for melanomas are the hard palate, followed by the gingiva. That's everything for this video. Thanks for watching.